What's up, everyone? It's Jason again. In this series, I'm calling my Quick Hit Tech Tips, as I will be quickly going through individual Siemens function blocks. I'll be talking about their inputs, outputs, and how to use them. I hope you enjoy. So we've been talking about the Siemens motion control blocks for use in Siemens technology objects. Now, as a reminder, these are ISO specified blocks. And so other manufacturers, if they are meeting this specification, will have the same functionality and the same naming. If you're familiar with those blocks, you may be a little bit more familiar than you realize. Today, we're gonna to be talking about the MC Move Jog block. In a previous video, we talked about the MC Move Velocity block, and these two blocks are very similar because they have similar functionality. They differ in the MC Move Absolute and Move Relative blocks because the inputs have to be maintained in order for these functions to work. Now, that does assume that the drive is already running and set up with the other MC blocks such as MC Power, MC Reset, and possibly MC Home. If you're not familiar with those, maybe find those in a previous video. Let's take a look at the inputs and outputs of the MC Move Jog function block. As with all MC commands, we have an axis input. We can populate this axis input with the technology object itself and dragging from the project tree into the axis and dropping it. That'll populate and connect all of the data from the technology object into the MC move jog function. As we continue down the inputs, we see a little bit different than we have seen on any of the other blocks. We have a jog forward and a jog backwards. These inputs are used similar to the execute bit in the MC move velocity, but with a slight difference. You have individual bits for forward and reverse. As with the other block, you have to maintain these inputs in order for the motor to keep running. I'll say that again. In order to keep the motor running, these inputs have to be maintained. Moving down the block, we see that we have a velocity, an acceleration, deceleration, and jerk, just as we've seen with a lot of our other motion control blocks. And once again, we see that we have the position controlled input as we did in the MC move velocity. These inputs operate as you would expect. The velocity is in engineering units, degrees, degrees per second, millimeters, inches, feet per second, however you have your technology object set up. Same with acceleration, deceleration, and jerk. We talked about the position controlled in the MC velocity, and it works the same way. Essentially, all movements of a technology object have the ability to be verifying the position in addition to the speed. What that means is if you are doing a position controlled jog, you are only controlling the velocity, but it is keeping track of the position to make sure that it is keeping up with that set point. Meaning, if you have following error monitoring enabled, you can get a following error fault in a velocity move. As you can see here, I've disabled the position controlled move because I don't want to be actually tracking whether or not the speed is exactly how it needs to be. Finally, let's look at the outputs. Just like in the MC move velocity, we have an in velocity output, a busy, command aborted, error and error ID. These outputs function exactly the same as the MC move velocity. Anytime that the axis is actually in a range of the set point value at the input velocity, the in velocity bit will be active. As long as the function block is being executed with a jog forward or jog backwards command, the busy bit will be true. As with all other MC blocks, if the command is overwritten by another command, such as an MC halt, the command aborted bit will go high. Again, with all of the other MC functions, the error and error ID give significant diagnostic data. Again, as with all other blocks, click on the block and hit F1 to pull up the help. At the bottom, the error ID is available with more detailed information about all of the error IDs. Let's talk specifically for a moment about how 
this block acts a little bit differently than the MC velocity command. We've already talked about the fact that there is a jog forward and jog backwards bit, which is almost similar to how the direction bit is on the MC velocity. With that said, the MC velocity is a single trigger. So for each time the execute bit, it activates the inputs and executes the move. The MC move jog does not operate that way. It operates to where all of the inputs of this block are updated on demand. That means if you change the velocity input while you are running this block, then the velocity will actually change. This actually means that you do not have to use the override velocity in order to change the velocity during a move. You can change the MC jog velocity as shown here directly while it is moving and it will change the velocity. Functionally, that is about the only difference between it and the MC move velocity. I will say that as we advance along, the position controlled move of these velocity functions are very important. And we'll talk about that in the next one when we talk about torque limiting. But for right now, this is all the information about this MC job. I hope it's been helpful. If it was helpful for you, hit that thumbs up and subscribe for more.